Why, hello everyone, and welcome to the inaugural stream for the Critical Failsafe channel. It is a pleasure to have you here, and I'm just going to cut straight to the chase. I am Atwas, I will be your narrator this evening, and I'm going to go ahead and let my cast introduce themselves. Hello, I am Alex, or Xander, and I will be playing uh, Broden Fink. Hey there, I am uh, Jack, otherwise known as Split, and I'll be playing Jonathan Holder. Hi, I'm Jordan. Uh, I will be playing Archie Dupont. Thank you so much. I can't wait to meet your characters. So, we're going to get right on into it, I believe. It is the late, late, late in March in the year 1915. There have been well, at, at this moment, the Western Front in World War II, uh, World War One, pardon, is at an absolute stalemate. The race to the sea has left miles and miles of trenches being held by both sides in the conflict. And as a result, in an effort to break this sort of stalemate, the British decided to take their Grand Navy and attempt to force the Strait, force the Dardanelles, a small sliver of uh, a very small sliver of, of, of sea that runs from the Mediterranean towards the Black Sea. They hoped that in that way they could break the stalemate, assist their ally Russia, and also cut off the Ottoman Empire from providing any sort of assistance. Unfortunately, this failed. Drastically failed. It was tragic really. The entire might of the British Navy converged. There were minesweepers, there were French ships as well going forward, doing their best to, you know, use their naval superiority. It didn't work. It didn't work at all. Strange things happened. Ships went down. The HMS Irresistible, in particular, went down in a gout of flame and an explosion, with very few people surviving. This was not anything that anyone expected. The Ottomans were known as being the sick man of Europe for a while. They weren't powerful. They weren't up to snuff. They didn't have a modern military. But between the bizarre, strange storm that had been brewing, as well as maybe the mines? We're still not sure. The British Navy was rebuffed. And now they mass off the coast waiting to enact the next part of their plan. One that will be a lot more difficult, a lot more bloody. And our soldiers, our unit here, will be directly involved with after a sense. So, how about you lot introduce yourselves real quick let me let me actually set the stage mm -hmm. real fast you are on one of the flagship boats uh of the navy currently the hms queen elizabeth um you have been volunteered by members of your you know current units to go forth into some sort of a special mission so please go ahead I guess I'll go first then. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, if you want to go first, but uh, Jack, go ahead. I was no. Yeah. I was gonna suggest that maybe you should alphabetical. You know. Okay. Sure. Why not? Um. Cool. Then. Uh. Yeah. I am. I'm playing. Uh. Broden Fink is a 23 year old, uh, Caucasian male. Um. He is very. He's got like he he's you know about like six foot. Um relatively like stocky build um he is wearing the green uniform with like a bandolier of like pouches that goes you know across um the torso that also go you know also like diagonally and horizontally um he has on what is a slouch hat like a wide brimmed hat with like one side folded up against uh um one part of the brim folded up against the hat 
Um, he is uh, a, a an, he's Australian. He's he's with the ANZAC forces, the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Um, and uh, I see that he is probably um, leaning against uh, the, the the prow of the ship, um, waiting for a sign of something to do. Uh, he's not a smoker, but um, he's uh, just kind of keeping an eye on things, you know, letting not fully at attention, just uh, uh, waiting respectfully. Hmm. Uh, very nice, very nice, very nice. He seems like a wonderful uh, call to attention, man. Now, Jonathan, on the other hand, <laughs> is not as at attention as everyone else. He's... Jonathan is... Uh, about a five, seven, uh, young, but not as young as he should be looking. Uh, light of skin, uh, a couple of tattoos just kind of on his arm uh, in, the, in the more tribal sense, something that you would get when you think it looks cool, you know? Uh, and a... Lar like his his uniform is not quite up to code. It's uh, you know it's certainly on, but it's not buttoned correctly. It, it seems more like he kind of threw everything on in a rush. Like his uh, his superior officer was going down all the bunks and just waking everybody up and making sure everyone was at attention at their shift. And uh, he's currently posted up, uh, probably. I don't know how close to Broden he would be, but he's more than likely uh, nearby to where he can see the waves. Uh, possibly near the supply depot, so he is very close to everything, and uh, just sitting there with a little flask that he has occasionally snuck underneath his shirt in the only the only thing that is tucked in only so he can throw his flask into it and be aware that it's not going to fall uh, with a large uh, very not code gaff hook hanging off his shoulder with a large amount of rope just kind of winding around it uh, as he sits there taking a sip of his sitting there, taking a sip, uh, busting a lime, uh, uh, and watching the, the waves go by in a, almost a trance. Archie DuPont is neither standing at attention, nor is he relaxing. Um, Archie is sitting, fiddling with cards. Uh, you see this French soldier, so he's donning this, this blue uniform uh, at his side. He has a Trinidadian issued machete that definitely wasn't his when it was first given out, um, but it still hangs on his hip as if he was born with it. Um, he's about 5'5", five, five, uh, just very, very little man, very slender. Um, the, his brownish skin just kind of like appearing from like under his sleeve and before his glove as he flitters and flicks with a card uh, his helmet uh, this, this metal helmet that he wears has a dent in it though he knows not how it got there but he just remembers that it is there now wasn't there before but it, it's there and it's his um, but the no it, Alchi is just sitting. He is just sitting and uh, and waiting for the, uh, the the next response. All right, thank you. I'll say you don't have too long to wait. You were called here at a particular time, sort of uh, close to dusk, and as you've all sort of congregated in the general area of the deck, uh, striding up to you is a captain from the British Army, as well as a member of what looks like, um, his uniform seems Air Force, British Air Force, but the captain is definitely the one in charge. Uh, he's not really 
the type of man that you see often on the front, however. His hands are soft, his uniform is very crisp, clean, and well-maintained. He approaches you lot, and he gives a sharp salute. Broden falls into line, just salutes back. <clears throat> Doesn't make a big show of it on his face, but uh, definitely clocks the man's soft hands and judges silently. Uh, Jonathan, upon seeing the, the man come up and giving them a sharp salute, uh, kind of shuffles up to his feet, like almost as if like a child were a little excited, but not trying to show it. Mm -hmm. uh, he swiftly like throws the the flask into his own shirt in a, in a movement that he's clearly practiced and uh gets up to his feet stamps them together and gives a salute uh archie stands almost like like similarly excited but like it's a sort of excitement that you know like like when you would hear the bell ring at school and you mm. know that class is over uh his wait is over so now he can get up to do something so he has to stop thinking about what he's about to do mm -hmm. uh but yeah he stands up he sets the cards down immediately forgets that he ever had cards in the first place uh and stands at attention he uh the the, ca the captain dismisses the salute and sort of waves away the man behind him who was standing at attention to but is visibly injured he has his arm in a sling he sort of, um, kind of straightens up. Um, gentlemen, Captain Bell, Donovan Bell, a pleasure. Captain. Right, right um, right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and, and kind kind of as, as he's drawn closer, you kind of look at his insignia, seeing, you know, what division he's part of. It's not really anything that you particularly recognize as ground forces. The thing that stands out the most is that there is a small badge. The badge on his collar is that of a, uh, a triangle with an eye in it. Very small, but nicely enameled. Otherwise, he's soft-spoken, thin mustache. He's got these very intense light gray eyes. But after his uh, initial awkwardness, he sort of settles down. Right, um, thank you for your, um, for volunteering. There is a bit of a situation that is in need of a small, discreet unit of folk. And you were, well, volunteered to me from your commanding officers. Now, this man, he sort of gestures to the pilot who is, who's behind him, um, Pilot Murphy, and who, who introduces himself as uh, Pilot Murphy. And as you are sure, I'm sure well aware, there has been an amassing of troops. There's been a lot of reconnaissance happening uh, for our next move on the Dardanelles, on the, the peninsula. Now, something particularly odd occurred, and there needs to be a ground team sent to investigate. Uh, Murphy, if you please. Murphy sort of, sort, sort of, um, heads forward, kind of gruff, looks like he hasn't shaven in a little while, has his arm in a sling. He keeps trying to gesture with it, but then kind of, like, winces and puts it back. <clears throat> Right, um, I was up in the air doing scouting stuff, taking aerials, and as I was flying above, there was an earthquake over one of the hills to the east of one of the towns, uh, Coadere, I think. There was smoke, ash, it's like the hill cracked open, and there was, um, something within it it was white some sort of structure maybe uh maybe a temple maybe um a church uh, some some sort of building i don't know either way i got chased out of the air after that and um got shot down but and, and captain bell sort of like interrupts you know thanks and thank you murphy um yes a second scout was sent out with um, some additional film trying to get a closer look at the phenomena that Captain Murphy 
uh, reported, but he has not yet since returned. In fact, he is long overdue. Uh, we had some spotters on the ground. They saw that he made a circuit around the area, but it looks like there was another aerial attack. They saw the plane go down in flames. We need to find the pilot. We need to recover him. And we need to recover whatever photographic plates he managed to get. Either the plates or any other information about the phenomena on the ground. Now, we cannot allow any complications. The, the operation must go forward, and so we don't have a lot of time. Now, there is a local that is going to meet you in the cove just off the coast. You are to follow him. He's He's been kind enough to help us with certain ground activities. You have to meet with him. He will point you in the general area and provide as much assistance as he can possibly um, spare. Right. Uh, any any questions, gentlemen? Um, <clears throat> yeah, per permission to speak to... He um, sort of weighs the hand. Granted. Um, I, uh... Just, well, I, I wasn't familiar with any I don't know, volcanic activity in the area. Uh, are we, should we be expecting, like, lava fields or something that's, you know, particularly hot? Sounds like a, I don't know, what, what do they call it? Ge geothermic activity? Um, you shouldn't have to worry about any sort of uh, volcanic activity, that's for sure. There might be, well, obviously something seismic, but nothing so, you know, right. correct. Mm. Right, sir, right. John looks over at Archie. Archie looks over at John. Look, both look back over at Rodan like, hmm. <laughs> Archie's look is like, the, the, he gives a look at like, the fuck, they didn't tell me there were volcanoes in Europe? Like, the fuck? <laughs> like, like, he just, he's totally like, a... Rodan is looking straight forward. <laughs> um, all right, thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, anything else? When do we leave? Uh, go down. There is a um, there's a lifeboat ready to take you to the cove, or rather, to take yourselves to the cove. I understand that you, in particular, are quite adept there, Private Holder. I'm sure you will be able to manage you and your small team. Right. Yeah. Well. Right. Oh, uh, one more thing, sir. Sorry. Um. You mentioned uh, I look over at the the pilot um, and I and I and Murphy and I say um, you mentioned that um, you were you were shot down over while well, you were, when you saw this are there you know, artillery that we should be aware of in the area should, should, anything that we should know um, not too much in terms of uh, artillery from what I could see from the aerials I did manage to get I'm not too sure what got me in the end. I'm fairly certain I saw maybe the maybe the shadow of another plane up in the clouds, but that's nothing that you boys need to worry right, about. Right. No. Uh, it, it'll it'll be done, sir. It'll be done. Right then. Ca Captain Bell sort of sort of uh, adjusts almost like self-consciously his uniform. <laughs> um well good luck then. Right. Um, oh, the uh, man you're meeting, uh, the fisherman. His name is Renard. Uh, right. Carry on then. Yeah. Uh, well, Broden salutes and and flushes and and kind of like you know slings his um, long you know big rifle and you know bayonet over his torso. Which kind of uh, turns to Archie and and John and uh, right John, who is also saluting. <laughs> Yes. Right, so, um, I, I guess we're, we're going then. Um, that'll be it. Uh, do you need anything, uh, supplies? Anything like that? Well, you got... Do you have some? We could get something. Are you a quartermaster? Like, did you bring cargo aboard? Like... That's not exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. Uh, alright. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm no, just gonna no, go ahead and assume that you got everything that you need no yeah I'm, I'm good i'm good right uh looks over at archie 
They did not allow F me to Full finger guns. <laughs> I'd... Sure. Sure. I'd... I am good. They did not allow me to bring extra bread on board. I do <sighs> not have uh, supplies. So I hear there's a knife boat waiting for us. There's a boat. There's a boat. Um, right. Oh, uh, yeah, boats. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Great. Well, then yeah. you, you boys know where the boats are. <laughs> Archie's gonna, he's just gonna start walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna start walking. He helps the god that they follow him. Yep. Uh, John is assuming that the captain and Murphy have like, haven't like fucked off oh no they thoroughly fucked off they like let left you guys saluting and like walked the captain Damn. just like walked away <laughs> kind of absent-mindedly the captain and murphy both of them uh yeah i'd say so so um okay. never mind private uh i'm sorry i i, I missed holder. that pat uh, uh, private holder at your service private dupont you can call me archie if you like uh Private Fink, uh, you can call me Brodin. My friends call me Brody. Uh, just yeah. Can I call you bro, bro? Uh, I re I prefer if you didn't. I think I like it. Uh, I don't. I really like Archie though. That's a good one. All right, Archie. Uh, Jonathan Holder. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um. Well. Um. Jonathan. Johnny boy. Johnny. John. Yeah. Whatever you want to call me. Nice to be working with you. Um. Can we get off the water as quickly as possible, please? What are you doing on the boat if you're not good with the water? I was ordered to be here. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> John just takes yeah. the lead because he knows where the boats are. So it, it's been a bit of a walk. It's been a bit of a walk. The uh, the Queen Elizabeth is like the flagship. She's one of the newest, the best, the biggest uh, dreadnoughts in the fleet. So it, it's a bit of a hike, and much to your dismay, Private Fink, the boat that you are to leave off for shore in is significantly, significantly smaller than uh, any boat you've been on the ocean in, all things considered. It probably would be used as a lifeboat, but this is your liaison towards the shore. Broden takes deep, heavy breaths. Yeah. Uh, the the boat comes natural to Archie. He's he's fine with the boat. He's chilling with the boat. Yeah, no. Uh, John kind of hops into the boat, getting everything organized, seeing all, what what he's working with. Uh, no hesitation. As the thing rocks, it's like he rocks with it. Uh, and he sits down, just waiting for everybody. He looks up at Fink. You gonna be all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be all right, just um. I'm not particularly, you know, good on the water. Not a, not a water guy. Got it. No, I, I, uh, I'm not sure if you know this, but Australia's a lot of land. Right, right, right. Well, if I, uh, if I know Australia, it is surrounded by water, no? It no, is. I've, I've heard, I've heard quite a few, uh, quite a few people describe it as just one big island. It is uh, one giant. Uh, how do you say uh, boat? It is a uh, one giant boat. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not. It's a laugh out of him. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what you mean by that. I am. I am just messing with you. Are, oh, are you not? Right. Uh, are you not like used to the water, or do you get sick? Is it like? Uh, uh, or is it like uh, you know? No, I, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I admit I feel a little, a little sick you know, when I'm on. You know, just um, you know, it's 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 like a. I've never really traveled on the water prior to enlisting, so, you know, just still getting my my legs for it, I guess. Ooh. Right, 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 right. Well, don't you worry, brother. I'll go ahead and take it nice and slow for us, okay? Yeah, uh, that would be uh, much appre appreciated. He, 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 he waits. John, he he waits. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he waits for, for Broden to get nice and situated, um. starts it. Uh, like you know gets it like a little slow he kind of revs it a little bit you know try to try to give bro like a an idea of what they're working with like mm -hmm. it's like and then they start moving very slowly very slowly and then all of a sudden the bow is up uh <laughs> and they are going yeah archie instinctively leans forward 
<laughs> as it, as the boat tips upward, he also tips forward. I, I imagine Archie is sitting behind bro and just like puts a hand on his back. Like before the fucking boat tips up, he just puts an arm like a hand on the shoulder. Uh and then it's just fucking go. Yeah. <laughs> he he's he, nice he, and on plane, the fucking on. boat like kinda hops over the uh the wakes of the uh of the destroyer. You know? <laughs> like... Now Luckily for all of you, or perhaps less luckily for the uh, more cheeky ones, the sea is unusually flat. It is like a glass mirror. The sun is beginning to set and the rays are sort of casting out over what would usually be the waves, but it's just unusually still and clear. And it doesn't take long for you to get to the cove that you were directed to. It's fairly close by, all things considered, and as you approach and get closer to shore, you indeed see a, uh, a cart. You see a cart drawn by a donkey, a man sort of sitting up uh, in the thing. He sort, of, uh, he, he sort of perks up a little bit as you guys come in and land, but otherwise he doesn't really move to get out. Uh, what was, what, what, what is the guy's name again? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I think he said Reynold, 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 something Reynold. like that. Reynold, Reynold, oh. Ronaldo, Raymond. Yeah, I, I, we went a little too fast there for me to have cognitive thought stick with me for much longer than a moment. So uh, um, you're going to be really useful on land, I hope. Can I get uh, the fuck back on land right now, please? We are getting there. Uh, <laughs> Well done. Uh, and as we as we get closer to land, Archie does kind of like uh, first he he takes off his boots. He's not gonna stick his boots in the water. Uh, he heard a dude do it once, and now he lost a toe. Um, but yeah, he he sticks his he sticks his feet in the water as they get closer to land. Uh, gently lowers himself as he helps guide the boat so that the uh, the fucking rudders don't hit the rocks as we just. Mm -hmm. start cruising onto the onto the stony shore you know what at, why not yeah. why not give me why not give me a roll give me a transport <laughs> roll uh oh there archie oh, private dupont uh just a target number of one success please oh god i love having guts uh just, just one success just one then i will pour three extra dice always save one in the chamber this is why I do it. <laughs> yeah, let's keep, maybe re-roll all of those. Yeah. Oh, all of those. Do I, do I have five guts? Oh, no, no. I have four. Hey. Ah, there, there we go. Hey. So as a, as a very quick aside before we get into the arbitration, the way this game works is that you have a pool of points that are your sort of main attributes that you can draw from, and then you can use those points to modify pools of d6s that you roll. Fives and sixes are successes and good. Everything else is not a success and uh, definitely a lot worse. And there's a bit more nitty gritty as we get into it. There are things that you can do, separate things that you can do to manipulate your roles. But for now, uh, Archie, uh, Private DuPont, you sort of, um, just as, as you're sort of helping guide the small skiff to shore, uh, you almost get caught a little bit off guard the sort of um the sort of dip in the sand you almost like sort of trip into it but you catch yourself your toes kind of skim the bottom and easy smooth in and you see the uh you see you see the guy on the cart sort of nod a little of approval and kind of a uh, sort of get up stretch a little bit he looks kind of stiff and hop down to actually come forward and give you a hand. He's a bit of a heavy set sort of guy. He's got a pretty he's he's got what you would consider maybe like a kind face, one that's used to smiling and laughing. And he introduces himself as Renad, R E N A D. That's close. Okay, okay, I thought it was Renad. <clears throat> Renad. Got you. Got it. Uh, all right, Renard, uh, what's the scene? So, I take it you are the people I take to Cohendere, yes? Indeed we are. Right, that's, that's right, yeah. Well, very well then. Uh, come Wait, this pop, way. Pop in. Oh, all right, come yeah. this way. He, he sort of takes you around back to the cart. It's, uh, he kind of, there, there's like a tarp over the cart. He sort of flips it back. And it is a pile, just this 
mound of fish. Dead fish. It is, uh... The smell is, well, it's dead fish. But he sort of, he sort of slaps the side of the cart and, um... This is the best way to get you past, well, any guards or anyone else if the military has outposts set up. So please, uh, be quiet and I will get you there as quickly as possible, yeah? Broden looks at Archie and Jonathan and just goes, All right, lads, for queen and country, right? And just like crawls up into the cart and just <laughs> pushes himself back up against the fish, like scoops him out of the way, make a little extra like divot room and just kind of goes, Oh, yeah. Archie uh, looks at Johnny. John um, looks at Archie, gives him a quick nudge. Someone's he's a lot more confident on land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Archie, Climbs in. <laughs> Archie follows him inside. As, as you sort of try and get your purchase and sort of end up kind of laying down, whether on your side or on your back, uh, the sort of fish kind of almost squirm underneath you and shift. Uh, they kind of rub against your hands, leaving this almost slimy texture. Not wet, slimy. And Renat, Renat sort of kind of looks at, looks at you guys. Well, better you than me back there. Anyway, we'll be there soon salute. enough. He, he kind of, w with a little bit of uh, dramaticism, sort of takes the tarp and sort of, sort of swoops it back over the fish, ties it down on the end, and then after a little bit... There's like a, a beat after the tarp is like closed off, then just like in the dark and silence when Broden just goes, and I thought they smelled bad with the top open. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little sound of a, a, a like a, a sloshing, and then a... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Now, either that's a particularly wet fish, or do I smell rum? You might. I'm amazed I can smell anything in here. Well, I'm passing the bottle, friend. It's not a bottle, but uh, go ahead. The wagon he, he, jerks like, into motion. He just... <laughs> yeah. He, he, like, John has, if they could see him at all, John has fully situated himself to be the most comfy as he could possibly be. On like on a mattress and under a blanket of fish, oh. <laughs> he no. just kind of like holds out from underneath the the flask, which seems somehow spotless. Yeah, like I feel like I feel around for I grab it and like kind of take a whiff and just go and then and take like a, a, a swig and go. Uh, uh, Depont, Archie, did you uh, you want any of this? Uh, it's give good. me a moment. Uh, and he he reaches into his nose and he he did in fact like pull some fucking like tissue out of his nose <laughs> uh gags puts the tissue back in i am good thank you right i, I do not want to uh open my mouth right now thank you yeah. i hand <gasps> the bottle i hand the bottle back over to jonathan <laughs> or rather like the, the flask and just go cheers mike absolutely uh looks at Archie. you sure it's barbados if i swallow i will uh taste the fish I can't lie, I did in fact taste the fish when I swallowed, and, um... That's what the rum is for. Yeah, no, alright. <laughs> Just forgot the Damn. fish. You know, I, I do not mind being a little numb. Uh, and he he does, he, he takes the rum. Uh, right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> he gently uh, does not unplug his nose, but, like, does still kind of, like, sniff it kind of, like, out of impulse. Uh, mm -hmm. before he, like, accidentally, it. like, sniffs the tissue further into his nose. Yeah, <laughs> like, further into his nose. Um, takes a swig and just kind of, like, lets it sit in his mouth for a minute, uh, before he, like, lets it slosh under his tongue to, like, his left cheek and then to his right cheek and then he swallows. He tastes the fucking fish. He <laughs> really fucking would. <laughs> uh, a, a light, like, gag, you can kind of see, like, when he, like, Put the alcohol in his mouth you kind of saw like his cheeks rise a little bit uh very much like he's not archie's not used to drinking alcohol he doesn't drink he doesn't do it often uh when when he does it's it's always this reaction just his cheeks kind of rise like his nose like his nostril kind of like flares like a little bit almost like he's holding his face so that you don't see that he just had a reaction but it's still a little apparent and then he swallows, and he chased the fish, and he is pissed. 
The journey is long, it's cold. After a bit of your shenanigans, it's sort of the first leg. There's kind of a light wrap on the uh, tarp covering the fish. It's uh, Renard probably reached back with um, whatever switch or he was using to drive the donkey hitch to it. And you just hear him sort of hiss. Quiet. Mm. Quiet. Pretend to be fish. Yeah? Just get real quiet. Now, mm. we are going to be moving into the journey phase. Oh, fuck. So, the way this works is the journey is a point in the game where our players, or rather our soldiers, give up a card in an effort to succeed on whatever parameters the journey, the journey entails, and also in that sort of sense it kind of gives us a little insight into what's going on. Each, each journey has different requirements, so let's see how this goes. Now, the ride is cramped. It stinks. From what you can tell, Renaud is purposefully going on sort of a, a away from main roads. There are great inclines of elevation and then decreases. It's almost like he's going on a trail. And the smell of the fish is overpowering through whatever last rays of sunlight kind of peek in under the tarp here and there. You're just confronted with the fish. Their cold, dead eyes stare at you. It's almost like, well, it almost reminds you of something. Now, the question that I would like to ask all of you is please think on what your best fish story is. Just think about it and uh, just play, play a card. One card for each of you, pass it to my hand. And once the first person plays a card, I will call out the suit and the next person then cannot play that suit. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Uh, Jordan and Jack, do you guys need a quick reminder of how the system works, or are you good? Uh, I opened up the card stack. I'm trying to figure out how to... Yeah, you go to your... You chose it should be named, like, DuPont or Archie or something like that, and then yeah. you click and you click pass, and then you pass to... and select the narrator, and then... Okay. How do I... How card. do I select a... How do I... Oh, the, the number of the card? So, like, is it, yeah. like, the number of the value, or, like, one, two, three? I, I think it's, like, one... Two, I think it's, like, no, you're passing one card... I think you can pass it by making it the top in your hand, I think. I, 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 mm. Yeah, it oh, says the oh. draw mode is uh, like the top first, so I'm assuming one for top first is the first card. Oh, in order. gotcha. I just, so, figured out, I just figured out how to select a card specifically. So when you're looking at the foundry, uh, yeah. you see the card. On the very right of it, there's going to be an arrow that's pointing to the right. That's your play card option. Oh. Uh, you can just pass that to the narrator. Oh, that's right. okay. That's useful. Yeah, so I'll pass that card to you right now, Atlas. Do you want us to hand these cards face down? Uh, it doesn't matter. Just don't look at it. So first we have a diamond played. So that means the next person cannot play a diamond. We have a spade. So the next person cannot play a spade. And we have a club. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> now. Let us do a little bit of shuffling and I will then pass you. Was some... I supposed to draw cards or? You already drew your cards and oh, spent them, right. remember, for that's advancement. Right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Now, the question is going to be, what is your uh, best fish story? And how about we go um, alphabetical order by yeah, player? So, Xander, how about you take... This card right okay um <laughs> all right yeah sure um to tell the fish story with base okay yeah well what, what's um, the card yeah. first oh i uh, got the uh sixes spades interesting so your fish story has to do with a fish surrounded by death Oh, sorry, mm. fish surrounded by death. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, 
best fish story, all right. Um, I mean, it's the classic rules, right? Yeah. Broden, growing up in uh, the outskirts of Perth in Western Australia, um, is no stranger to scarcity. Um, think it, it's hard. It, he grew up on, a, on like a ranch, like inland on, in the hills, very dusty, very, you know, it's a hard life. Um, and I feel like he recalls uh, surrounded by death. Um, there was a there was a cargo ship that came in from oh I think it was Madagascar or or somewhere similar um, that was a, a, like a fishing hole loaded with like fresh catch, um, but um, what happened was that it ended up being um, there was like a scab. I think Broden doesn't know uh, if it's like. Um, if there's any like uh, legitimacy to it but like this fishing ship that came in um to like sell a bunch of you know things uh, there was like a plague scare um mm -hmm. th th you know they, they, they thought there was like this sickness on board and um they were like docked for like you know like like 14 days you know no one was allowed on the ship off the ship um there's a whole scare around it um and the fish just started to fucking rot oh that dock oh, no. smelled like the worst place imaginable for two straight weeks. There was like one, like, you know, it was like a Tuesday Arvo and he was like in town with his like father doing things. And like it at one point, like, like, uh, like uh, some like local just took a lumber ax to hold the ship, trying to bust it open to get the fish to spill out into the ocean. <laughs> it was, it was they they still haven't scrubbed the smell out of the docks to this day. Uh, thank you so much. Hmm. Although reminiscing, you're not sure you're ever going to be able to scrub the smell out of your uniform at this point. That's all right. <laughs> all right. If you if you will, please send that card to the discard. Thank you very will much. Do. Thank you, narrator. All right. How about? The next one. Let's see. Jack, how about you you take this card? Interesting. Now, yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, the, 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 the five of diamonds. Oh, now for diamonds. <laughs> give us your best fish story about a fish that either made you money or took it away. <laughs> this is fucking perfect. Okay. So here we go. Now, I, being from the the, the Caribbean, the, the West Indies, as, as a lot of them say, uh, is... I, as a, as a, I, I've had uh, my fair share of uh, being in the water and, uh, you know... Going down there and just grabbing them, right? Now, there was one time that I... This is a little bit of a combination story. Now, I wasn't planning on this fish. I wasn't planning on this fish at all. I was never planning on going out and finding this thing. Uh, this big motherfucker. Uh, what had happened was I was transporting uh, from one place to another. I was just off of the coast of Trinidad and um, there was this hell of a beast in the water. It was a big shark, right? A big fucking shark. And it had come up and it had knocked around the boat, right? Mm -hmm. It knocked around the boat a bit, and I wasn't too worried. You know, big things they they like to fuck around. The sharks they like to uh, they like to skim against the boat to uh, to see what you are, that kind of thing, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, well, the problem with that is that I had some valuables on the skiff that got knocked right the fuck off. Not right the fuck off. It, I was transporting some goods, some uh, fruits, and this motherfucker 
ate the shit out of it. Now, I had to go into coast and explain what happened to the fruit. And they tell me that that port, they tell me that that guy, that that big bitch had been terrorizing the fuck out of them. Mm -hmm. For days, days upon days upon days. Even took uh, took a bite out of one person. I didn't take any limbs or anything, but um, took a big bite. Got a big old scar on their side to, to prove it. And they told me if I knew anyone who had the the, the cojones, as, as one would say, to get the fuck out there and uh, take care of it, they would have some money in it for it. And well... I uh, I look at them. I uh, I have my hook. Uh, I had always used it for you know just practical practical things. But I was mad, you know. I just lost my money, and they just offered me money. So I went the fuck back out there. I got in the water. I, I anchored up. I got in the water. I waited for that bitch, and I took its eye. I took its eye, and I took its fin, and I brought it back, and I got a fucking shitload. <laughs> How big was it? It was a bitch. Uh, it was big. <laughs> it was big enough to leave quite a few marks. Um, if I could, say, it was at least twice my size. At least, at least. Mhm. Mm All right. Thank you, Holder. Mm -hmm. So, if you will please send that card to the discard. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, for the last one, we will take this to DuPont. Now... Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's, that's the Queen of Clubs. Okay. That's, that's a big boy, that is. <laughs> now, for clubs, give us your best fish story about a fish that was either the victim or a perpetrator of wanton violence. <laughs> so, uh, Alchi Dupont is a man of romance. Yes? Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was down by the, uh, by the creek with a girl, uh, my age. We were swimming, we were hanging out. It was so lovely. And as we got close, we engaged in conversation. You know, it was normal, it was sweet, it was kind, and then I feel something touch my thigh. And I was like, oh, hello, bonjour, oui, oui, sonny. And while she was confused, she did not know why I was looking at her the way I was looking at her, but she was responding by looking at me the way that she was looking at me. So I thought that it was cool, you know, and we were... Uh, d John, how do you say, uh, digging it? We were, uh, we were, uh, digging it, yes? Uh, and so I approach closer. I kick my little legs as I swim closer. And we are, I feel something touch my waist. And then, oh, hello. Something is touching my waist. And it starts to go down. And I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> and suddenly I feel pain. Uh, I feel a, a great amount of pain. Um, where the sun doesn't shine? When you swim by the creek and an eel bites your dick, that's a moray. And I had never wanted to fight a fish more than that at that point. And it got away. And I now have a scar that uh, makes for a fun story time. Is it a blessing or a curse that Atwis didn't put our webcams as visible on the journey screen? Because we're losing it right now. <laughs> Absolutely losing it. It's, it's okay. I can take us back to the webcams real quick. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much, Private Dupont, if you would be so happy as to send that to the discard. Be much appreciated. Pile. Get out of here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, God, that was funny. I have to, I have to ask. Who had the best fish story? Mm. 
Oh, that's hard. Yeah. I really like DuPonts and if, so, if someone has eyes on chat, I'll allow them to vote too. I have an eye on chat. Okay. Okay. On chat. Uh, curious. I'm gonna say personally. Mm -hmm. And the fish bite your dick. That's a boy. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. I, I, I think I, 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 did, I did like the success story for Holder of battling against the shark, but honestly, I'm gonna give it to Dupont. I feel like I, the. I've just got to give it to him. I, I mean, if I got bit on a dick, I. Yeah. So, yeah that was that... the one thing that shark didn't bite me on my dick. <laughs> Now Archie has a scar. I didn't think about this before. <laughs> uh, now he's he's got a little he's got a little perma scar down there. Little, cool. little it's like a divot, little divot. <laughs> it's, um, like, it's like a, like a little like ridged divot. Okay. Anyway, it's a so, great so... way to introduce yourself uh, on a first date. Anyway, uh, so in that case, since you were, I don't know, just Listen, leave me alone. They either they either do not believe you and they would like to see, which is a plus, or they do not believe you and they leave, which. <laughs> Which is not thank you, bad. thank you, thank you for your All right. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming out, everybody. It's around. <laughs> Since you were judged to have the best fish story, you uh, get your card back. Actually, Ooh. now hmm. this Lucky. card can be played as normal. You can use it as normal to manipulate your rolls, or. You can use it uh, in a sense that you're sort of retelling your story, and this will allow you, uh, to someone who might find it interesting, this will allow you to later on turn any role against an NPC that you're retelling it to from a failure to a success. Ooh. Ooh. So okay. keep a hand on it. Okay, that's a good one. All right. After 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 some time, the wagon finally slows down, and uh, Renard sort of uh, it comes to a halt, and you hear sort of creak and shift as Renard gets out, and he sort of undoes one of the one of the tie downs and opens it, one opens the tarp once more to leave you all looking up at the sky. The sun is at this point set. Uh, the sky is clear. There's not a single cloud in it, and there are just... the amount of stars visible is kind of extraordinary. Unless you've been out in, really, the country where there yeah. are no lights. You've never seen anything like it. Yeah, Browden does not- is not phased at all. Mm. Uh, Hops out the cart and uh, offers a hand to uh, um, Dupont. Uh, helps get uh, you know pull him out of his little fish trench. <laughs> Dupont accepts and he, he he takes and he jumps out as well. Jonathan makes his way out as if he's done this a million times <laughs> before. <sighs> Thanks, Reynold. Uh, uh. Of course, it's um yeah. now it's a bit late, and he sort of he sort of waves behind him, and you realize that you've kind of stopped at this sort of small cottage, sort of way farther down the road. You see sort of the lights of a small town, but um, this is uh my home. I would be happy to put you up for the night to give you some uh, he sort of looks you up and down, some more civilian clothing. Uh, if you would choose to mingle with the locals, uh, some food, etc. So, it is up to you, all things considered, but my doors are open. Well, I appreciate the hospitality there, mate. Clap them a little too hard on the back, just misjudging my own kind of strength and just go, you got a, like, um, I don't know, like a, like a creek nearby or like a well, some buckets? Uh, you know what? Uh, Maybe sure. some boiling water. Um, <laughs> uh, anything, if you, anything whatsoever. If you if you feel like boiling the water yourself, go right ahead. I can. Uh, sure. There's a yeah. there's a well out back, and he sort of he sort of directs you after sort of a uh, unhitching the donkey, kind of moves it in towards this little like lean to almost stable sort of thing. He uh, directs you out kind of back. There's a big well, and for the rest of you, unless you want to join, Broden, uh, he. Open, he opens his doors. It's a very small uh, kind of cottage, really only, you know, a few rooms, but he's more than happy to accommodate you, and he begins preparing some food. 
yeah basically just out back while if you guys are going inside bro and just starts like you know, like just taking off gear unbuttoning his coat and is just taking up buckets of water from the well just to like help like just dunk things to like maybe help get the fish slime off of it and is just kind of like out there and like you know in like in his like wife beater kind of like you know kind of like tank top and um um and is just kind of occasionally splashing like water under his arms and just going fuck and is you know just kind of <laughs> really trying to remove it but eventually he'll 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 give up and like hang his like uniform out to dry and like in in and in, in, like wander you know into the house um i just think so bad. yeah i was about to say i think i think john might join him just because at the very least like the smell doesn't bother john as much it's the feeling yeah uh, nice that's <laughs> like this is like it's like you're saying he's like right no it's it's a feeling but also like it's rude to you know, go yeah, into go in for go. it's really going exactly. for supper smelling like I grew up around like cattle and, and and you know I'm I'm no you know stranger to like smells and dust. He says like kicking the ground like something like, dirt away. He just goes, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, my mum would you know hang me from my ears if I came to the dinner table smelling mm. like you know cow manure after a long day working. Yeah. So. Yeah. I do not like smelling bad. I just I do not mind slime. I do not mind the, the texture. Texture is one thing I, I I do not like smelling bad, especially if we are going to converse with locals. There might be someone. Right. Who... Yeah, makes sense. I understand you, mate. Well, um, scrub, scrub, scrub. Do your best. I'm gonna get some grub. Kind of like clap both of these soldiers on their on their backs and and, oh. and saunter on inside. He's got some rent. <laughs> he gets hot. <laughs> uh, Archie just kind of says hate. to himself. Uh, <laughs> uh, Archie begins just kind of like scrubbing up his hose, and he, he looks to John. Yeah, John's like already stripping down, like <laughs> it's like squeezing the slime out. So, yeah. so, do you know when the? Uh, do you think the Americans are going to join the war? At any point? I mean, I don't really know. I. Why wouldn't they? Truly, uh, they seem like a bored bunch. I don't know. They they seem so uh, cold to action. I would have thought that they would have uh, joined sooner. No. Good sense. Uh, they they do tend to stick their nose. But hey, that's. I'm not one to call an entire nation Mako. You know. Uh, Archie kind of like. He, he nods, uh, just kind of continues to scrub his clothes. This is the, the first time in a while that I have seen a uh, countryside that is not a uh, trenches or holes. Mm. Something about it is uh, it's comforting and a little eerie. Uh, I do not wish for this place to be turned into something that's like, you know, France right now. Ah, uh, yeah. Cannot say that I relate. I haven't really been to France. Uh, I went to Egypt and then went other places. And um, well, I, I've just seen a bunch of sand. So, <laughs> ah, sand. A bunch of sand, a bunch of water. Reminds me of home. Just really big. Archie kind of like he he nods to that uh, and shakes the thought of an impending like war traveling through this area and just finishes scrubbing his clothes, gives it a little. <laughs> That's <is> good enough. <laughs> he, he hangs it up to to dry, uh, and and lets it lets it go. <laughs> In the meantime, Renan has been uh, sort sort of puttering about. It's a well-stocked kitchen. Altogether, the home is small, but it's very cozy. And sort of the uh, the night continues to go on. He's stoked a fire. Uh, to your chagrin, perhaps uh, the fare is fish stew, as that is the thing that is uh, most easily available. He kind of uh, he kind of apologizes for the irony, but. Uh, you know, sets sets down your sets down plates, bowls. You know, some bread here and there, etc. Offers you a spot of wine. It's not very good wine, but it's at least something. And uh, 
sort of after w once dinner has commenced and even after after dinner and once you all start having conversation he kind of uh props props a head up on one hand and um so you are um looking for your pilot yes right it's uh what we were told uh, crashed or i assume crashed somewhere here mm-hmm uh, how much do you know about Cohedere? Um, um, nothing other than the fact that I know something about uh, volcanic activity, something like uh, earthquakes and all that sort of stuff. Don't know about uh, volcanoes, but earthquakes. <laughs> oh. Wait, wait, I got, I, I got a little like, uh, like holder. This one cut. Archie had a sigh of relief. He, he don't uh, fuck with volcanoes. <laughs> happy to be the better of good news, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, I'll take a little bit of that where we can get it. So, yeah, we're looking at there maybe to find, uh, I'll assume he crashed. Um, yes, uh, sort of uh, out towards uh, one of the hills, Maltepe. Uh, I can probably point you the way better, or anyone could point you the way better once, uh, you know, uh, the morning comes. Now, I will say, it is a bit, um, he, he sort of does a little, you know, side to side sort of thing. Um, listen, it's not perhaps the best to tell the locals that you are, they, they, they don't take too kindly to soldiering types of any type, if you understand my meaning, yes? Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, well, I mean, as long as you, he, he kind of like pauses and he sort of, uh, he, he sort of tilts his head a little bit and he kind of plays a bit with his spoon. Actually, you know, as long as you mention you are foreigners of some sort, I, right. I'm actually sure that you'll find uh, quite a bit of hospitality in the town it's a small place we don't get uh too many people coming through you know yeah mm. yeah i mean you mentioned something about a change of clothes uh right yes i have some uh, civilian clothing available to you much it's um, not much but i think i have enough to fit all of you and uh he, he sort of uh, I... gets up from the table and he kind of moves over uh he, he kind of like usher like towards the sort of main like living kind of area there's like a hearth there's sort of this uh it's like a living room or a den type place he, he's got like a chest and he opens it up he's got some uh kind of almost stale smelling old clothing uh he, he sort of like holds up every every few pieces he kind of like looks at them by you it's like oh, no this one won't work ah oh, this one will work and he like tosses it at you uh, you'll forgive the, uh, smell of mothballs or whatever, it's, um, my, uh, mother's church tends to keep some, uh, <laughs> tends to keep some clothing on hand for the, uh, for, for the needy, for, for those who are, uh, for whom it is necessary, and I would say it is necessary in this case. Now. Understood. Um, feel free. Make yourself, uh, make yourselves at home. I would be happy to show you into the town in the morning. Otherwise, uh, well is out back. Um, outhouse also out back. Uh, town is he sort of uh, sort of oriented himself that way. I do not have much in terms of beds. Um, I can get you blankets, etc. It's um, blankets would be more than enough, right? And thank you so much. Great. Perfect. He, he sort of um, he sort of digs down to the bottom of the chest and hefts out a sort of um, stack of blankets. And the, the fire is burning low at this point, but it's more how, than comfortable. How, how far is the town from here? It's very, very close. Probably like maybe a 15 minute walk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Reynard, um, mm. you mentioned uh, town. Is there like, um, I don't know, yeah, it's late, but uh, any any folks around there? You know, up and about, like you guys have, you guys have, you guys got a pub out here or something, you know? Oh yeah, uh, of course. He's he's sort of like uh, he actually takes out a pocket watch. He looks at it. It's not too late. It's uh, only about what uh, ten o'clock, maybe. 
there are plenty of people coming off work, fishermen, farmers, etc. You know, all that. Just, um, you know, be careful. Yeah, right. Thank you for everything, Reinhardt. We appreciate it. Um, I, uh, depart, uh, and, uh, hold it. Uh, can we, like, talk outside for a moment? Absolutely. Of course. Right. I will, um... He sort of he sort of moves and he kind of he kind of like uh, taps the door frame as he goes. My bedroom's down the hall. Um, call if you need. I will tap tap. Lead well, you to it. His shoulders kind of slump and he heads down the hallway. Archie Archie follows Brody wherever he goes. Yeah, just outside for a quick spell. Um, Brody kind of just like you know, posse's up with y'all. Um, goes, right, so, you know, a little huddle here. Right, not a bad bloke. You know, hey, makes a good fish too. Um, Very kind, yes. I like him. He's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Could have used a little, uh, you, you should have dipped your rum in the in there a little bit there. Maybe that would have, uh, the stew helped grow some hair on your balls, you know? <laughs> well, you see, when, once he offered us uh, some wine, I didn't want to waste any more of what I got. Sure, sure, right, yeah, I guess, yeah. Well, look, hey, boys, um, what do we want to do tomorrow? I mean, we'll, I mean, obviously head out there, but uh, I, I, I feel, and, you know, we're all privacy. I'm not going to try to, like, pull rank or whatever. I um, feel like we should get up bright and early, right? Make the most of the daylight while we can. I feel like we do, we do not want to uh, waste time uh, yeah. if, you know, if the other team finds what we are looking for that is it we, we go back empty handed and that's shit you know shit out of luck yep so we we want to move as quickly as possible um were you thinking about going into town or did you oh, want to ask i'm them? gonna i'm gonna i'm I, I, I think that we should prioritize getting up early i'm gonna jog into town real quick just to do a little you know ear to the ground here like the light treads all these like if, if I know, you know, tans, even small as this one, people are going to talk at the end of the day, you know, and I want to see if I heard if anyone heard anything. So I'll just give, like, a little listen. Uh, but I'll be back, like, you know, under an hour. I just want to do a quick survey. Nothing wrong um, with a little scouting. Yeah, I think you two, though, you got the worst of the fish in there. You were, like, wearing a blanket a bit. Oh, I was comfortable. Um, yeah, that's what concerns me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course it would concern you. you you're not a big uh, water guy. No, I'm not. Um, so I'm saying you two, yeah, knock it in early, right? I mean, this is nothing. I can jog in. Archie's Archie's looking at Brody. You want to go to the bar, don't you? Is that is that what it is? Ear to the ground. <laughs> you want to go to the bar? The, the, I'm actually the... being bloody serious, mate. I'm 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 I'm, I'm saying like I'm I'm gonna do a quick little. You know, run around the area, like give a listen to people. And if it just so happens that I end up grabbing bar, yeah. a drink casually, I'm casually, not going to stay in it. I'm not staying in at the pub or anything. I'm just saying I'm going to go run down there. Look, if I can I can skip the pub entirely, I just want to give a quick listen. That much yeah, is... Yeah, there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with going to the pub. I, matter of fact, I think I will right. also casually jog into town and listen <laughs> to people. And maybe listen to people at the pub. <laughs> do a real fun, you know? I'm not, hey, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stop you, but he like, looks at looks at DuPont's legs. How skinny are DuPont's legs? So DuPont's not really a skinny person. He's uh -huh. just small. So yeah. he's, think of like a, like a ferret, you know, like kind of, kind of like, sure. he's, he's a little, he's a little <laughs> like wiggly, but he's not, he's not a noodle. You know what I mean? Like he's he, he's, he's healthily like, proportionate for his size. He's yeah. he's a bit of a tube. Like that's, <laughs> okay. So in, in, in a way to de to describe him, uh, yeah. he, he could he could jog. He could possibly keep pace unless you fucking sprint. I think. All right. Here's my opinion. I think tomorrow we should have a clear head, good rest. I'm not gonna be grabbing a drink, getting into little, little tanny. I'm just gonna go listen for a few minutes. But I say that the three of us should absolutely get a drink at this town if we come back with passing through on our way here. All right? <laughs> <laughs> that does not sound like a bad idea. So, you two get some rest. All right. 
right. Now, before you go, yeah, uh, just want to hold yourself to some kind of uh, promise, uh, mm. if you don't mind. No, no, I'll go ahead. So, in this, let's say hypothetical, uh, that you perchance end up in the bar, you grab us some drinks. <laughs> I'll, con I'll consider it, mate. All right. In that case, I think I will sleep soundly. <laughs> you think they do walk me dance? Mm. God, no. Great, yeah, cool. He'll, he'll, uh, Brody like claps him on like on their shoulders and just kind of <laughs> says, um, "Right, you know, tuck in. I'll, uh, I'll be back in just a minute." You do you? Uh, right. You said it was fifteen minutes of the town by walk, right? Yeah, narrator? right, right, around about. So yeah. like, uh, so like a brisk seven-minute jog for Brody. Yeah, I'd say so. Gotcha. Um, are, are you're you're just going in double make hair type thing, or? Well, yeah, he he Brody's he wants to like jog on down to this to this little village, um, and not really interact with people. He's wearing you know these civvies now, so he's going to walk around. I think what I'm trying to angle for here is maybe an investigation check because it is ear to the ground listening keeping an eye on things getting a feel for like what people mm -hmm. might be talking about without actively like participating in conversation and prying things he's just see he's 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 getting a feel for what the talk of the area might be mm -hmm. if anyone else is like talking about like strange things going on locally and then broden might realize he can't understand what these people say because he doesn't speak the language um we'll cross so that I'll bridge see, yeah. when we get there yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so first, let me do a little something, something. Oh, oh, oh I don't like that one bit. Damn, I like that dice. That's a nice dice. That's a nice oh, dice. Why, thank you. Um, so, Broden, you, you take a brisk jog down to the uh, town of Cojadera proper, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's fairly quiet. It really is a small town. You do see kind of a smoke coming from buildings here and there, fires lit. Uh, there's kind of like this main road. Uh, one of like a few of these buildings obviously look like uh, drinking holes of some kind, and you know, as as, as you sort of go, you realize you kind of um, and you kind of notice this as you're putting the heavy clothes on. God, they stink like fish. Oh, oh. it's all right. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I put up with worse today. Come on. But as you sort of uh take the hill down. Uh, s sort of from where Renaud's place in down into town proper you see streaking across the sky just this towards the north you see what could only be a plane of some sort it's on fire perhaps but it's just this brilliant red orange almost meteor meteoric tail this is going by and it leaves this sort of trail of smoke illuminated by its own flames and by the stars and then, after a moment, it disappears behind the hills to the north, and the smoke just kind of, after another few seconds, blows away. Crikey! Did I did I see what kind of plane that was, or was it like too dark? It was. It was. Uh, it was. It would be too far away to tell what kind of insignia it was, but also it was on fire, so I don't yeah, think you'd no. be able to. Yeah, exactly. I think Broden's debating if he wants to sprint back up to the cabin right now, or if he's gonna just kind of keep going. Did we did we happen to see that from where we were? Were you outside, John? Were we outside? Were we chit chatting before you went inside? <laughs> Taking a smoke, like. Mm. Uh, I could say that we were possibly outside, maybe making sure our clothes didn't get stolen, some kind of shit like that. You know. Maybe. And well, we, we can be outside. We can yeah, be outside. Sure. It, if there are smokes to be had, we will have a smoke eventually. So Ar <laughs> Archie will just watch you smoke. He he doesn't smoke himself, but he likes the company. They're Frenchmen that don't smoke. In in that case, as you two are taking kind of a break, talking amongst yourselves outside, doing a little bit of a nightcap thing going on, you're a bit farther away, so you mostly just see this bright streak of light, sort of a cascade, like from behind some of the sparse clouds, and uh, to the you know behind the hills to the north. But otherwise, that's about it. Hmm. You can't tell it's a plane from here. Just to clarify. Weird. 
It was a ball of light. Yep. Do you, do you believe in wishes? Is that a shooting star? Could be. Make a wish. Find out. What did you wish for? I can't tell you. Don't come true. Ah, shit. <laughs> you know, actually. Oh no. How about you tell me? Just send me I... a DM. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, Alice, was you had your you had your devious face on, and I'm like, oh, the narrator's mm -hmm. here. Okay. <laughs> Narrator is here. Narrator says, "How about you tell me your wish? We'll just see what happens." And with that, yeah. I think it is a good enough time to go on a break. So nice. we will be back in about 15 minutes. And until then, please stick around. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome back. Uh, thank you for being patient while we were on our break. And I think we should just go right ahead and pick up where we left off. So. Broden, you were going into town, you saw a streaking, flaming light shooting down from the sky, what seemed to be an airplane of some kind, and, uh, what's going on now? Um, I think Broden, after he sees, like, this plane, um, has a moment where he weighs whether or not he's going to, like, run back up to that cabin and, like, alert mm. the boys. But he, he, he you know, processes and goes, eh. you know, he's going to keep going on to do a quick little cycle through the, the area just to keep his ear pressed to the ground, uh, you know, metaphorically. Um, um, and yeah, I would like to attempt uh, rolling investigate, you know, just to see if I can like hear anything, pick up on any information or anything interesting in the area. Yeah, sure. Um, how about you give me... Hmm. Actually, how about you give me a either an investigation or a communications role? It's going to be investigation. <laughs> okay. Uh, the bigger, the better then, and we'll see Rose how it goes. Not a smart man. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to put three in the role, so I'll roll four, one in the chamber for myself. Okay. Always. 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 Always keep one in the chamber. That is... Uh, three successes. I'll re-roll that, that, that one three. Might as well, right? Might as well. Might as fucking well. Okay, so three successes three, is pretty good, fine. I'd say. A respectable number. All right. Seeing that little red dice fly out makes me nervous. It makes me scared. <laughs> like, that, that made me nervous. I don't <laughs> like that. Okay. That is red dice. Uh, are you looking for anything in particular? Are you going towards a place in particular or something no, like that? No, just mostly, I mean, like, wherever, like, the majority of people are that would be talking, I, I'm mostly just, like, listening for, you know, like, anyone talking about, like, strange goings on with, like, the earthquakes and, like, seeing, like, you know, vol maybe a volcanic activity or, like, fire and stuff like that, or if there have been other downed planes in the area, especially now that I've seen, like, one streaking across the sky, NBD, I'm just, yeah, I'm mostly just trying to hear what the locals are talking about if, if, mm -hmm. if there's any like news that, that, that or any strange things that are coming around here yeah um i would or, or if like or you know it's even more importantly um have like if anyone may have seen like a wounded pilot who had like mm -hmm. or a, a crashed plane in the area you know it's like there's general information for things of interest yeah okay um with three successes then i would say that um, there, there, there are a few places that you could probably walk by without, you know, attracting too much attention, especially as you're dressed as a local. You may not completely look the part, but it's close enough. And, uh, you know, there's sort of like, um, sort, sort of balconies, or not quite balcony, but sort of like patio seating areas, one of the pubs and stuff like that. As you pass by, there are a few people, kind of in, admittedly, um, you know, some broken sort of pigeon uh, language here and there, but you get enough to understand that they're talking about how uh, the the Mutar is worried and has been looking for some 
other people you're not quite you're not quite sure about like the intent here but the idea is that this mutar person is looking for a replacement of some sort and then the, uh-huh and then the other sort of um the other sort of bit of gossip that you get is that there is Mm, let's see let me me double check here the other sort of gossip that you get is that um, there are a few people a few people um, a few mostly like outskirts you can tell they're kind of like either farmers or fishermen or something definitely not people who are within the uh, town itself they're talking about how they're worried uh one of them has a friend within the town who has been um you know con- really concerned about some sort of uh attacks of some kind that come in the middle of the night and they've been coming more and more frequently and they say that they really hope that the i really <clears throat> i really hope that the mutar finally figures out why this is happening this is Never, generations have gone by, and you know, here we are. All of a sudden, the mutar changes, and it's not enough. I don't understand. So it seems like the newer, yeah. yeah. Broden is like listening to this mostly just from like you know, you know, like patios and dark corners, and and like you know, just areas out of the way, unassumingly, and like crossing those mutar. Right, and then, yeah. If I if I you know don't catch a whip or anything else on another, you know, little my little loop around, I'm gonna jog back up to the cabin. And if my compatriots by this time have uh, tucked in for the night and are going to bed, then I will lie down as well and relay the information for them in the morning. Otherwise, if they're still awake, I might you know pass along. On. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll I'll say. Oh, go ahead. Actually, go ahead. On, on the way back up, as you sort of uh, pass by, sort of slinking through kind of the more uh, paths less trodden throughout the village and so on and so forth, you kind of, as you're going down an alley uh, between some of the more, you know, larger buildings, there are, you see a kind of heap of blood spattered goat corpses. And at this point, they've kind of been pushed against one of the walls of the buildings and it doesn't look like they were really it doesn't look like any sort of meat was taken off of them per se but um, they are very dead and it looks like almost as if they've been drained of blood in some way and, well actually I mean and oh okay. and there is an old woman a crone if, if you might say and she she sort of a uh, she sort of has this ancient she looks ancient her clothes look ancient and she has this very old sort of mop and she kind of has a bucket and she sloshes some water down and she sort of mops away some of the blood and she's kind of uses the mop to shove one of the goat corpses to the side and she looks up at you and she doesn't say anything uh i look back and just kind of go, save none. She sort of shakes her head, and she open she opens her mouth, and she points, and her tongue has been cut out. Sorry, didn't knock. Um, just kind of like look back up the road, just like look at her, and just go, um, uh. Good work there. Um, is that uh, something the... Uh, sorry. Do you speak English? How about you... How about you make me a communications roll? The higher the better. Love that. It's a single die. Yeah, let's go! Because I have I have two in smarts and no training in communications. Let's go, baby! No, uh, so like yeah, Bro- Bro's just like, Bro- um, in- English. Un- do you understand what I'm saying? Or else I'm talking a lot. 
she sort of, she sort of like she kind of um, props herself up on her mop from her usually sort of a uh, hunched over stance, and she looks she looks at you, and it's been a while since you've felt like you've been looked at in this way before. But she shakes her head, and then she takes her mop, and she kind of like uses it to push some of the uh, liquid kind of sloshes over the uh, cobblestones as in, and towards your direction as if all like right. a shoe yeah. motion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he puts his arm and like, and, like gesture, goes, all right. Uh, um, and then he kind of like, walks a little bit away and he kind of like stops him and he goes, um, like points back at the town and then like just says, uh, Musa? She, she, she kind of like perks up a little bit as you know this is a word she actually yeah. recognizes and sort of um she looks to you and you're kind of in the sort of the center of town yeah. and she points towards the more kind of eastern point of it. it the town's sort of in like a valley almost there are hills yeah, yeah, yeah. on every side of it and towards the eastern rise of hills there is a uh, kind of not like a large per se but a more larger than the other buildings there's kind of like a home and another sort of building and it's got some lights on she sort of points in that direction and she kind of like gives you a look as in like yeah is that what you wanted i give her like a like a, like a weak thumbs up and goes hey thanks uh. she, she 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 kind of you know at this point she kind of like she approaches you, you're not too far away from each other. She kind of nods kindly and kind of like she gently pats patch pats you on the shoulder and just after a moment she just kind of lets the hand go and just knifes a hand across her throat and shakes her head and points back to where you came from. You in particular came from to the west. Right. Uh Good evening, or uh, night. And I just kind of like begin walking back up the way, look over my shoulder a couple times at her. Yeah, she she has gone back to sort of swabbing the blood out of this back alley from these goats. And I yeah, will jog the rest of the way back to the to the house. Okay. That's fucking creepy. Yeah, that's that's sufficient. That's a whole bag of fucking weird. <laughs> right, <sighs> Archie, are we awake? Uh, how long were we talking? Um, probably not very long. Okay. I'd say Broden's probably been gone for about I don't know. Does um, it's like an hour sound good to you? Sounds about sounds yeah, right to me. Sounds like good. he would have just done like a loop around the town, then jogged back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hour sounds it, good. Archie Is would it, definitely still be awake. Yeah, if it's not that late, yeah. For sure. Or you'd be still late. be up. We'll just make sure. We're probably still talking if it's only been an hour. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it's only been an hour, we're, we're probably still chit-chatting. Y'all are outside, right? Yeah. Having a smoke. All right, so I, yeah, Broden like walks up and he's just like, all right, you still up? <clears throat> What's the scene? Honestly, can we... Can we go to bed and talk about it in the morning? I need to, I need to think about that for a minute. Uh, no, it was fine. Nothing, you know, nothing. Just like local talk. Nothing really too relevant. I saw a Bro, plane go down. Yeah, I was. Is that what that was? That was a ball of light. Yeah, it's not there. a shooting star. I do not get my wish. I will choose not to believe you. I'll choose. Oh. Hey, I'm gonna process what you just said. All right, no, never mind. Um, no, yeah, uh, no. I just plane went down over the hills. Um, I mean, locals are talking about like uh, I think problems, and I assume to be like local leadership. I have to talk to Rena in the morning, but I think just hey, I admit first things I'll, I'll admit about myself. I'm not a smart man. I'm practical. I know. Hey, you know, I. I, I I grew up in you know, working pretty hard, but I'm not a smart man. John is taking understand. just the longest drag. And I also, cigarette. yeah, I also understand that I'm from a very different culture, and so uh, I'm trying to keep an open mind. 
and that I might, you know, just be seeing like local customs as weird, and that might just be like because I'm not, you know, familiar with what they, what their life is like. So, um, but uh, you yeah. look downright disturbed. As you look uh, sufficiently spooked, what happened? A lot of um. Well, I'll talk a bit more about the um, like what I heard from the locals in the morning. Just you know, brains a little scattered. But on my way back, I saw um, there was like an old woman, like a local, and uh, she didn't have a tongue. I don't think she you know spoke English, so you know wasn't she couldn't communicate with me, and I certainly couldn't communicate with her. Um, like, like John's like kind of eyes like his brows raise in a moment and that's just kind of hmm. and she okay. was uh, wiping up uh, like blood from uh, like a big old pile of dead goats now like I said I grew up on a ranch with you know livestock cattle I mean Ooh, th these weren't was... like it wasn't like a, a slaughterhouse it was like a uh, like a bunch of look I'm hesitant to use the word like ritual sacrifice like I, I it, it just they, they were they were bled. <laughs> so I mean, maybe they, they maybe they collect goats' blood for some purpose that I'm not aware of. But just there's a lot of dead goats, <laughs> and it was it wigged me the fuck out. All right, so what what country are we in? I just I I totally missed you're 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 in. you're in Turkey, babe. It's the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> you're in Turkey. Okay. Um. Would we would we know about any of their customs? Hmm. Ar Archie travels, you know, like like a lot between France and Trinidad. So like, how uh, about you, like, you hmm. give me a give me a knowledge roll? The more successes, the better. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart boy, right, Dupont? I am Archie Dupont, and I am going to roll two dice because mm -hmm. I have three brains. Nice. <laughs> I will. I, I will not leave one in the chamber this time. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> a one and a one. You. You've spent a lot of time traveling. That that's kind of been one of the cornerstones of you as a person throughout your development and through you growing up. But you don't know Jack or shit about the Ottoman Empire or Turkey or the Armenians or like anyone at this point like you've had a lot of other things on your mind and uh whatever weird backwater custom the Turkish may have uh you don't fucking know and honestly you perhaps don't even care that's particularly French of you exactly yeah, Archie <laughs> Archie kind of nods he nods in understanding he nods as if he understands what's going on he kind of like he looks at Brody uh this man has a look <laughs> that he he just fucking knows and he's just it sounds like uh, witchcraft <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like witchcraft to me right so I'm going to bed um I'll thank you too as well we should get up we should probably be leaving with Reynard, uh, I don't know, probably first light, if he's up in a bit, after we get a meal, I assume. So. That does not sound like a bad idea. Right. Right. Um, All right. Well then, uh, go ahead on then. I'll follow you in a minute. Yeah, right, thanks. <laughs> Actually uh, follows Brody. Yeah, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll lay down for bed. Yeah, John's going to take a little time to be awake mm -hmm. outside as the sun goes down he'll come to bed eventually I mean the sun's been down so it's more like as the moon rises oh good that's even better mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah <laughs> nothing you would uh, take the time to do or just take a moment oh nope. just Take the moment to enjoy the moon while I can still see it. <laughs> Alright. In that case, you all at different times and in different ways finally uh, fall into a state of unconsciousness. It is dark. It is deep and it is blissfully empty. You have no dreams tonight. 
the morning comes, uh, it, it, there, there is no, you know, cliché cock crowing or anything like that, but the general sort of, uh, sounds of birds, songbirds that you've never really heard before in your life kind of filter into your consciousness and, uh, after a while wake all of you up and, uh, additionally to that, you hear the sound and you smell the smell of eggs frying. Okay. I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> That's the best goddamn thing I've ever smelled in my life. <sighs> Wakes up in a sense of confusion. Uh, like, John. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Uh, almost like the feeling that he is back home. Uh, if you look at his face while he's starting to wake up, uh, he wakes up positive, blissful, and as he looks around, notices the two other fellas in the area, and his face kind of drops, not out of disappointment of seeing you, but out of disappointment that he's just not, he's just not home. <laughs> yeah. John gives him, like, a half smile and a, uh, such an informal salute before uh quickly just strike in bro hey yo brother all right i'm up i'm up yep <laughs> right right nelly remember yeah right time nelly. to wake up we are going to be late for class oh shut the fuck up mate <laughs> <laughs> i like uh, for, for for at least holder i like have you ever seen the videos of people like waking up their pets by putting like a treat under their nose <laughs> that's exactly yeah. the vibe i get where it's just like put a little bit of an egg under his nose he goes oh fuck breakfast <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> if there is bacon just a single little I'm bacon up. strip the I'm tiniest up. I'm up I'm up fucking fuck off mate what do you mean <laughs> <sighs> didn't mean to how long have you two been awake about uh looks at his bare wrist <laughs> about alright okay about an hour and a half. Right, no, you didn't say you got bacon. I'm sitting up and like you know, so, putting so, my pants back on, like <laughs> buckling my belt. Mm -hmm. From from the from the uh, other room, from the sort of the kitchen area, which is adjacent to where you all were sleeping. Yeah. He just uh, he he just sort of he sets the frying pan down. He sort of goes out. He leans out the window, uh, not the window. Sorry, excuse me. Sort of the door <laughs> frame and just uh. Well, I, um, I figured there wasn't a better way to wake you boys than, uh, this. So, good morning. Morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. What? Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't speak, um, whatever. Spanish. Spanish. I, I do not speak Spanish, but I do have eggs, bacon, and I really sincerely hope you don't plan on staying here for very long because i don't no, have no, much of it <laughs> no we're gonna be we're gonna be hitting the road as quickly as possible again thank you so much for the hospitality granted um and for the food i mean the fish stew last night was you know if it wasn't for the journey up i thought it would have been delicious <laughs> but i mean uh no that sounds great um and boys let's 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 tuck in let's grab up let's go archie doesn't like eat a whole lot just kind of out of, as like out of habit and also like out of a feeling of like respect for him like making the food in the first place and just like i don't want to eat too much of this because he doesn't have much mm -hmm. uh such as war i will survive off of an egg so one parentheses one egg <laughs> can i offer you an egg in this trying time <laughs> um and, uh, yeah archie doesn't eat much i think he probably gets like one egg maybe like half a fucking strip of bacon like, dude is he's solid he's set he's good Bro to go. broden has like a respectable like two pieces of bacon to be polite and and uh like an egg and just kind of like he wants to respect the food that reynard made now here's the big question from john right right mm -hmm, like the big mm -hmm. like perception question how much did this man like cook compared to what is being taken a lot more than what's being taken <laughs> 
John's oh, gonna okay. take a full fucking play. Okay. Uh, like he sees his compatriots like take like a little bit of like the whole thing. Like, well, we don't want to take all of his stuff, and John's sitting here like this is all gonna go to bed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Just like, if Thank Dupont, you so much. This if is Dupont a lot. and Fink take less, like you know, Renata's just gonna like shove a little more onto their plates. Like you know, it's fine. <laughs> no, are, are you so? Are you? I won't complain. Brother, I won't complain. Brother, if you don't eat it, it's gonna go bad. You're right. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to be like ended up like the fish. So, thank you, Reynard. You are correct. You're welcome. Hey, of course, of course. Reynard, you mind if I ask you a couple quick questions before we get out? No, go right ahead. Um, I was about to offer. What is the uh the mutar? Uh, the mutar. That would be the um sort of um uh the I suppose you would say governor of the town. Okay. Yes. I figured it sounded like a leader, yeah. Yes, um, he I lives sort people... of towards the uh, east of the town, yes. Yeah, like up in that like bigger house up on the hill. Saw Correct. Last night. Um, oh, I... did you? Yeah, I, I popped down to town for a moment and just kind of like heard what people were talking about. Um, and uh, just, you know, I heard mention of Mutar. Had never heard that word before, so mm -hmm. I thought, you know. Um, Apparently saw a woman with no tongue. I don't worry about that part. Um, no, just, just, yeah, no, I just heard people mentioning, like, uh, the new Mutar, so I figured, oh, it sounds like a change in, like, government, so, I mean, just, you know, just, just clarifying what I heard, I'm not a man of letters in that way, don't know much about your customs here. I mean, um, Mutar Ibrahim is, I suppose you would say he's new, he has only been, uh, Mutar for the past... Uh, I would say three or so years after his father passed. Um, he has been doing yeah. a. He has been he has been doing well by Gohadere, I would say. A uh, Gohadere, sorry. Uh, oh, the town, the town's right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm remembering. Yeah. Um, it's nice. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I just heard people talking about um. I'm getting like attacks in the area. They're like soldiers coming in and and hurting you people. Um. Well. A um, animals, maybe wild animals. You gotta. I mean, growing up, I had uh, I had to hunt dingoes because they would come in and they'd really make a mess of everything. So I mean, uh, I understand. Dingo. You know, yeah. What is a uh, what is a dingo? It's like a wild dog. Hmm. Huh. Do you uh, call it a dingo? Oh, we just call him a fucking dingo. Why are you questioning me? <laughs> <laughs> do not question the man on, the, why, on his why, 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 why do you call it champagne? Because, because uh, it, it opens with a cha, a cha, and then it gives you pain afterwards. It's because it's from the champagne region of France. Because it is from the champagne region of France. What's the <laughs> I'm right. sorry, did they, did they come from, from the fucking dingo from down under? Like, wait, wait, what is it supposed to be? <laughs> the name comes for a reason. I didn't... I'm an American. But, uh, I'm brother. an American man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, hey, brother, Archie. Don't hurt uh, your head. Calm down. He's going to ask me why it is called champagne when I have an answer, but he right. didn't... And you okay. were already he questioning dingo. his mother's lessons to him, all right? Right. Okay. So, <laughs> um, what was what was your last stuff. question again? Sorry. Right. I think that's all right. I was asking um about you, these attacks. You, you heard about any attacks lately, like soldiers, um, animals? Well, um. You seem a little nervous there, right? And everything all right? No, no. Everything is fine. It's just then um, the whole. Well, he looks you all up and down. Well, you know. Everything this happening, we're not exactly uh, completely cut off from the ocean, right. but um, right. no, there has been, um, well, let's just say that um, he he kind of he kind he kind of his 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 brow furrows. Well, there are. Actually, how about you, uh, could you roll me a communications roll? I... I help with that? If... 
if he if he helps you, Broden, I will allow you to have one additional point to manipulate with. Good, because I can only roll one die. Excellent. So there you <laughs> um, go. Um, will the uh, chain bit up? Ah, I'm dividing one. Yeah, might as well, right? Always keep one chamber for yourself. Um, um right, I'll roll John, one. John helps. Just you know, reading Raymond's face. Uh, he looks over at him, gives him a a, a smile, just a, the warmest smile he's seen in ages, and takes out his own flask, offers it up. Rum from Barbados. You know, to take off the nerves. I will roll with the point. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, familiar. Uh, I'll spend that one point to bump it up to a five. Make that a success. Excellent. Very good. There you go. In that yeah. case, the Fuck four goes go. to a five, and sort of as you, Holder, you sort of offer, you sort of offer the flask, and Renad kind of like pushes it aside. It's like, no, no, I, I can't possibly, but sort of through your hospitality and through everyone kind of through the asking through the sheer like earnestness of you all kind of trying to help honestly is is the sort of uh, vibe that he's been getting from you he kind of takes a breath and just listen there are let us just say that there are worse things in the world than the Ottoman soldiers, if you can believe that. I mean, sure, all right. Um, I could. Well, keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind, yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Um, were you planning on uh, showing us down to the town, or were you staying up here? Or we were just going to begin making our way where we were supposed to go so we can go, you know, look after this pilot. Yes, um, I can, he sort of furs his brow a little bit, I can, I, I would be happy to, um, show you around, and help you, help you out a little bit, I, um, Juliet, please, the fish cat again. <laughs> d no, but, uh, also, do not take this the wrong way, but, um, I can only do so much, seeing as you all are no. foreigners and all, no. yes. Hi, we appreciate any help you've given us thus far. Honestly, if it's just pointing us in the right direction, uh, we'll take it. Um, I mean, I look at, you know, DuPont and Holder, I'm like, I mean, do we know where to get from here? I believe so. Uh, the general card in no direction. Uh, no we could just, you know, bypass town entirely, put on our uniforms and, 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 and hike it. You know, just so if we, you know, don't need to run through town with our gear strapped on. I am not unfamiliar with a walk. Yeah. Reynard, I appreciate, you know, your help this far, and uh, I think we could take it from here, just so, you know, you don't have to be seen with uh, a bunch of, you know, foreign soldiers walking through town. I mean, it's no problem. Uh, I mean, if you want to go through town, you know, showing up as foreigners, I I wouldn't say that the town's people would be um, opposed to seeing you. Like I said, there are far more things worse than the Ottomans. Oh, yeah. Look at, look at my fellow soldiers and I ask them, uh, I think we, I mean, we got our orders when I mean, probably one of the, you know, times of the essence. I say we hike it and we can always get Reynard here to show us the place on the way back if we want to have a moment to, you know, stop in the tan. But, uh, unless you two feel strongly about, you know, having him show him, walk us through town on our way out. I will feel more comfortable once we have what we are looking for. Right, yeah. That's how I feel. Um, um, maybe after, after we could take a detour on our way back. Uh, does Renard seem like he want like not just you know I can do this if you want but like kind of wants us mm -hmm. to go into town how about you give me either an investigation or a communications roll the higher the better I will roll communications because okay. I have at least one point in that um, that's my smirts, which is, I got three in that. So I'll go ahead and roll three and save one in the chamber. Okay. 
Uh, it shows you rolled a zero d six for some reason. Why? You gotta Why punch. You, you gotta punch the number in. Yeah, you gotta the put the number I in. I did. I did put the number in. Let's try it one more time. One more. Not in the bubbles. There we oh, go. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's two That's successes, baby. Two successes. And I've. Bad. I've got one left, but I can't use that to roll one die, can I? Um, I you can re-roll. You can re-roll once per roll. It's so like. Yeah, but that re-rolls the entire thing. No, right? you no, can no, choose. No, you can re-roll a single die. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You can, just, you can just choose to make it a single die. Yes, now. yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go ahead one. and re-roll that three. Woo! You re -roll the whole pool. It, it's. I'll take the I first know. one, which was the two, unfortunately. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I you know it what out. you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, um, no. Two successes. That's good. Cool. There, that's not too bad. Got to click off the thing before you hit the roll. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, even even so, you kind of uh, I'd say you sort of get the vibe that Renata's sort of, perhaps keeping keeping quiet, keeping mum about a few things from you, all things considered. But he's not been deceitful, yeah. perhaps. But it's sort of been like an emissions sort of thing. You do not get the impression that he's led you astray at this point. Yeah. But does he does he give off the impression that as he like says it's no problem, I can take you through town. Is that an intent of wanting us to go through town with him? Like like there's like a feeling that like he Or he's to just being cordial. Thing. Like either like yeah. Yeah, like is he just being cordial or does he have a motive? Like, he wants us to go into town. He is... Let me, uh... Let me think about... Yeah, take your time. I would say that... Renard is... It's kind of a mix of both. It's sort of the, um... It's sort of the drive to be polite and cordial. I would be happy to show you around everywhere if you so, so would choose. But also, he would be fine to judging how you all have been he would be fine to skip the pleasantries and at least show you to the sort of a uh, general area of where you all are looking for the crash site and so on and so forth i i think we should accept the help of getting there like we can but like let's avoid the town like yeah. we should just get there as quickly like no no fuss just get, like, yeah, get yeah, the yeah. going yeah, you okay. just make sure that we get what we are looking for before yeah. it is gone. Yeah, no. Uh, we we are here to do a job. Well, uh, yeah, we can just head straight there. No need to dilly dally into town. Um, Rain, and why don't you um, get your cart loaded up, or are you assuming you're taking the cart? I mean, it is. Uh, I would be happy to take the cart if you all do not want to walk, but I am also uh, very aware of. Um, he kind of takes his collar up and. <laughs> let's walk. Let's walk. Yeah, let's walk. Yeah, let's walk. Uh, I do not want to smell bad. <laughs> uh, then we'll we'll uh, just get our uniforms back on that we you know left out to dry last night, and you take your time. We'll just be ready whenever you are. Uh, boys, can I talk to you outside? He, cool. he uh, but before you go, Ren Renard kind of uh, he sort of like raises an eyebrow. Uniforms, yes. Well, I mean, you know, it's our gear. It's, you know, it's what we, you know, what supplies is strapped to my uniform, at least. He, he sort of, um, he sort of like, uh, you, you kind of see that he sort of assembles his face into a particular expression. Well, the locals will be, um, happy to see outsiders. Well, I, no, I wasn't saying we should. Okay, you know what? How about, like, we just, um, do you have, like, a, like, you know, like a bag that we could just, like, stuff our, our uniforms into just so we have them with our supplies no whatever i have i have already given to you so understandable understood understood all right well then we'll figure we, that outside i guess we do not have to take our uniforms if we are coming back i mean i mean i personally would like to have my rifle at least i'll take okay fine i'll take more yeah i'll take that i could yeah i guess i mean what what time of year is it again by the way narrator um, it would be March, I believe, March 1915. How's the, like, heat and sunlight situation? Um, 
I would say it's on the it, it's on the cooler side. It's okay. definitely not like oppressive or anything. Right. It's very comfortable if you would be uh, wearing a bunch of kit and walking right. about. Okay. It's fine. So fine. We don't have to put our uniforms on then. Um, I, I'm gonna grab my like some my my patches, my gun, my knife. Um, so I'd like to have my blade as well. Yeah, just to, in case we run into trouble out there. Better to be prepared than ill prepared. Right. All right. No uniforms, and we'll walk. And uh, will they raise a fuss seeing the three of us walking through town with our with our weapons? Not out, just like you know, strong on our backs. Oh no, no. I mean, you know, we are all. Um, I mean, he he sort of like waves his finger around. We are all. Um, it is a remote town. Shit. Yes, yeah, right. we yeah, are all you. strapped, as one would all right. say. <laughs> Opportunistic. And if we are foreigners, we have to protect ourselves somehow. No? Exactly. Okay. He sort of he sort of gives you a tight little smile. Exactly. True. Kind of, all right. Kind of respond with it. Well, then I'll I'll grab my gear from outside, and if the three of us are outside grabbing our beer, uh, our gear from like, or rather like just from where we tucked it, like we're away from Raynaud. Um, Broden will like kind of like you know, look at the, like the, the the boys and just gonna be like, "Oi, hey, what do you think? What do you reckon it is? I right? like, like out there, like, uh, like you think there might be some kind of? He said there are things worse out there than soldiers. You're thinking like maybe like wild animals or, um, like I don't know, like, you I know, know. I bandits, yeah, uh... or you know, um, criminals. I mean. Bad people out there in the hills, maybe. Well, I think uh, maybe like a, a secret military base. I do not think that it is a <laughs> secret military. Uh, I mean, like when you look at a soldier, a soldier does what they are told to do. Sometimes they are not bad people, but they do bad things because they have to. And some people are bad to be bad, or they yeah. take advantage of uh, how do you situations. Right, yeah. I've never right. been one to a Kiafoy bully. Mm. Yeah. Me neither, mate. Well then, let's just, you know... Keep our weapons uh, on us. Let, let's keep... Let's, let's be on our toes. There's something... Yeah, something weird. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting an odd feeling here, but... I don't know. Well, there was a woman with her, con with her tongue cut out. Uh... And maybe, maybe she was sick and they had it was like a medical thing or maybe she, right, I, right, I right, don't right. know what these people I, do buddy I'm I, from the Caribbean <laughs> they do not just uh, cut people's tongues out just because they are sick right, but okay. I also you know and we I know this will sound insensitive but we do have our job and yeah we she get to with civilian life no. uh, it, it could create more problems I fully especially. agree with you mate we should we should not worry too much about are you all ready on? to um yeah all good good to go good to go thank you very much uh as archie just kind of like hurriedly grabs his stuff uh he he does kind of turn like i do not think it is our problem no but i'm talking about like what's out there but we'll talk about that on the way i guess well whatever it is out there as long as it doesn't bother us yeah well all right let's find a pilot he, um, Renard, sort of, as you, uh, <sighs> sort of come forth, he sort of looks you up and down and just, uh, a after just the most fraction of a hesitation, he sort of nods. Very good choice. Very good choice. Um, anyway, I will, um, I will point out a few landmarks here or there, but uh, I will take you to the site, from what I understand, is what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, where there's, um, a, like a white building or something. Well, that is, um, I mean, are you looking to go to the Mutars? No. Wait, no. The Mutar? No, no, uh, not oh. the Mutars building. Uh, uh, is there, like, uh, the area that we're supposed to go to, is there, like, a white building there? Um, he, he sort of, uh, tilts his head, he furrows his brow. Are you, um... I was informed you were looking into the uh, plane crash, yes? Yeah, no, the plane crash. I mean, the area where they crashed, I think they said, like, oh, it's a geographical. But, like, Broen, like, realizes, like, maybe he's talking a little too much about, like, mission particulars. Mm -hmm. He is, on, is getting, like, this weird vibe off him. He goes, 
No, you just mentioned in the in, in our debriefing that the area of the territory was like uh you know, hills, uh some you know, like seismic activity and uh a white building just to kind of use as like a landmark just for like net they just find like the area where the plane may have gone down. Right, right. Um I can I can take you to the place where the well we saw activity happening. Right. Love it. That's all we need. Thank you, Raynard. Perfect, perfect. In that case, uh... Roden gives Archie and, and, and Jonathan a look like, uh, Raynard's fucking stressed about something right now. Like, uh, like, like, as a player, I, I have a feeling that Raynard is stressed about whatever the fuck is terrorizing the town. Oh, no, absolutely. It just, it, in character, Roden's like, oh, man, this dude is, is, is off kilter. Fucking uh, <laughs> John, John just kind of like, his... His <clears throat> eyes have never not been like half lidded, right? So he's just like brows raised, half lidded eyes. He's just looking at you, <laughs> fumbling through all that shit, just with a big fucking smug ass smile. I'm just like, oh man, that nearly went weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Nah, Archie sure. is just kind of, he's kind of watching and observing, but like the look on his face is kind of like, the fuck are you, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like, like, like what? So, uh, shall we? I, I think we shall. Fuck it, Archie. Like, the, like, uh, fuck it, John. <laughs> Sling hooks the fucking big ass hook onto his shoulder, pulls it down. Yeah, I think we are. All right, Renaud leads you through the town proper. Every every once in a while, he sort of points out the uh, general landmarks, like you know, here's the most popular bar, or you know, here is the, uh, you know, the sort of sh the street, the road that goes to the Mutaras area. Here's the you know city center, the jail, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, he leads you, however, north, and if you'll recall, north is the area where you saw that streak of light the night before but it leads you up north through the hills and it's fairly close i'd say probably only a 20 uh, maybe 20 30 minute walk from the from cojadere from the town itself and there is a just sort of this scar this sort of like furrow in the ground in the hills there of uh something like something plowing down into the earth and you know there are twisted amounts of metal stuff here and there but uh otherwise this seems to be the area this seems to be the main part uh that you were you know told to investigate at the very least at least as far as Renaud knows. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Any plane remains? How about you? What will make this a challenge roll? So, all of you, please roll the investigation, and then the total of you all will go towards what uh, is released to you. If that makes sense. You got it. Uh, I'm gonna do four. Keep one in the chamber. Mm -hmm. So here comes my roll. Ho ho! Chamber. I'm gonna oh. bump that to three successes. Okay, three. Uh, I'm gonna try that roll again. Okay, we roll them all. Do you wanna bump? Do you wanna bump that one? That four to a? Never mind. Fuck! Never I, mind. I, I, I'm sorry. I should have let you finish. I was gonna say that you could have bumped the four to the five. It's okay. Yeah, I, I should have done it. Like I was thinking it's about okay. it. It's like, oh man. <laughs> You got greedy. You gambled. <laughs> I, 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 you know, you know where I am. <laughs> Man, it's three and four chance. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and roll two. Keep one in the chamber. Uh huh. And I'm gonna bump that four. All right. Hell yeah. I mean, so that's, that's five successes total, which is uh pretty nice. If I do say so myself. That wasn't stupid. Hey, but uh, <laughs> calm yourself. You're digging up horrors. All right. In that case, you sort of uh, comb around the area, the sort of deep scar, the gouge in the earth. You see that it's um, relatively fresh. It seems to line up 
as far as you know, of uh, what Captain Bell kind of described about the scout sort of uh, getting shot down in the area. And Renaud has sort of been on the outskirts. He kind of uh, has his arms folded. He watches you all as you investigate. And after a while, he sort of steps back a little bit. And I'd say the person with the most successes, that would be Broden. So Broden, after a little bit, after a bit of digging around through the twisted wreckage and metal, you see a bit of... Um, overturned earth actually a little softer than everything else which is particularly noticeable because of the sort of hard rocky terrain that you're in and uh you sort of pick this up you, you you've seen this before you've had to bury a number of things on your um you know your family's ranch and so on and so forth and it seems to be a fairly recent grave perhaps ah uh. almost I don't know. Almost? Something seems to have been buried here very, very recently. But, like, how big is this, like, disturbed earth? Hmm. About, I'd say. I don't know. Probably about six foot length. Maybe about three foot wide. Yeah, I figure. I Perhaps mean... person shaped yeah i'm gonna take out my entrenching tool that from like one of my pouches and just kind of like sort of like you know kind of like digging in the dirt a little bit to help like like kind of like clear some space and goes oh i might find something oh what's uh, that brother uh it looks like someone was buried here and recently archie's observing the two as they head towards the body um and he looks back to where seeing as he's like stepped back now like has is something like off or mischievous about this how about you give me either a communications or investigation roll okay, also gotta point out john is not approaching bro <laughs> yeah no nah, broden is not like trying to like dig the thing up entirely but he is like um like digging with the intent of like Trying to uncover at least something that he could recognize, mm -hmm. or yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm gonna make an investigation roll. Sure. So we're gonna roll three dice. Keep one bad boy in the chamber. Let's go. A six and a five. That's two, and, and then you shoddy. have a two. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna re-roll that two. Let's see. Whoa! Yo. Three successes. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at there that. we go. So, That's what I'm fucking talking about. In that case. I will say that Renaud looks both, he looks guilty, and he also looks concerned, and you see his eyes kind of flick towards either side from where you've come from, to the uh, left and the right from the brush. And because of this, because you noticed that he has uh, noticed something. You're not completely surprised when you see a number of men and their dogs come out of the brush brandishing hunting shotguns, the dogs snarling and slavering. And one of them, the one who seems to be in charge, barks something in Turkish first, and then he barks it in English and says, HALT! Broden, who was digging and not noticed any of this, he stops and just like hands gobbling, you know, like he's immediately just like all like kneeling on the ground, now caught off guard, hands up. Oh fuck! I imagine like John fucking watching Broden as like Archie catches it first, and then John just like being almost in the center of everything, just slowly starts looking around, like raises hands. <laughs> Hi, Reinhard, buddy. Uh. What the fuck? Reynard's still there. <laughs> Renard has sort of, he he's sort of backed away a, a little bit, even farther. His hands are kind of up in a supplicating position. Uh, DuPont in particular, you see he's got a genuine, he, he's got the genuine, like, kind of expression of grief and apology on his face as he backs up, as if 
he didn't want any of this. Mm. Yeah, Broden fully acknowledged that he that he himself is like a big guy, and that like if he like moves too quickly, that might be seen as an act of aggression. So he's just like hands up, kneeling on the ground where he was digging. He just he dropped the the the, the entrenching tools and just hands up and waiting for these uh, these people to approach him with their guns pointed at him. And he's not making any sudden moves. And in fact, like he'll even like unsling his like rifle very slowly and just like, dro like drop it by his side as quickly as possible and just hands up. Archie. John. Archie does. Oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. Uh, I was gonna say like John, like just kind of slowly, you know, having his hands raised. He, he's he's kind of loose. He's more loose than one would imagine someone to be in this kind of situation. And he's just kind of looking around, looking at the dogs. He kind of gives like a little smile at the dogs of just like, oh, there's a dog. Uh, and uh, the the one who shouted halt, he. Uh, he looks toward them because he knows that they know English mm -hmm. and he just uh, gives like a, you know, a he not so much a hesitant, but like trying not to provoke like, good morning. The, 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 the particular dog that that man has at his heel just sort of snarls, oh. hackles, raise, you know, oh. fur bristling on end. And sort of uh, the the man sort of levels a shotgun at you, and the man in char charge sort of uh, sort of uh, takes a moment as if to kind of assemble the words in English, and just uh, barks at all of you on your knees. Archie, Archie had not raised his hands at this point. Like he, he really is just kind of watching this. Uh, he does go down to his knees, however. With uh, not really, not really bending to raise his hands, but he does look over to to John and Brody, uh, and he kind of like tilts his head. These are the bullies, no? Uh, are they wearing uh, Ottoman uniforms? How about you give me uh, let's say, give me an investigation check. The bigger the better, and I will allow the other <clears throat> two to help if they so choose. Oh, absolutely. I so I, assist. I get extra points? Yeah, yes. you will have two extra points to manipulate with. Oh, that's sick. I'll roll oh. six dice and keep one oh. in the chamber. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Son of a bit. Damn. Okay, it's one success. Damn. One success. I will use, <laughs> I will re-roll five other dice. Let's go. I could make that two oh, successes. Man. I would rather roll five dice Okay, again. Five, please, please, please recall that re-rolling, yes. you have to take the re-roll. You cannot yes, re-roll it that. again. Okay. I'm 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 only re-rolling five of those six guys. Okay. Just wanted yeah. to make sure. Yep, 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 yep. Two more, Damn so it. that's three Good. successes. That's that is the gamble. I will There we go. <laughs> I'm happy about it. <laughs> All right, with three successes, you realize that none of these people are soldiers at all whatsoever. If anything, you in particular, Broden, if they they look like civilians they look yeah. like folk who are from Kohadere and so on and so forth they're not dressed I in any sort probably, of uniform i have probably in my my life dealt with like people in western australia outside of perth like the kind of like criminals of like people who just like live out mm -hmm. in, the, in the in the you know yeah uh, just in the bush and all that so uh yeah i uh, in response to the bullies question uh, bro just nods and goes yeah i think so um Hands in the air, we're on the knee, we're on our knees. Yeah, we don't. They, they all slowly, like, lower. We're just here looking for a pilot. We're not here for any trouble. One of them, and you actually, uh, before you recognize his visage, you recognize his voice, uh, Broden, uh, Private Fink. You, as one of the people who was sort of on the uh, patio on one of the terraces talking about how the Muhadere wasn't uh, quite up to snuff sorry the Mutar wasn't yeah. quite up to snuff as the previous one in terms of uh, whatever was happening here yeah. but that one sort of he, he, he barks another command out in Turkish and the others sort of move in the dogs kind of snarling and growling kind of uh, fur bristling on their hackles uh, kind of in support of their humans as they all kind of uh, you know um, sorry 
uh, take you all into custody. They have handcuffs of some sort, or um, rather ropes or something. And at this point, if any of you sort of look behind, you see that Renaud has completely vanished into the brush down the road, down the trail. He's gone. Our uniforms are still there. We did not take our uniforms with us. My tummy uh, I, I, I don't think it's going to be our primary concern at the moment, mate. We will ah. be fine. C'est la vie. Uh, as, <laughs> as the, he just allows them to take his shit. Ah. Look, what, what is it you're detaining us for, right? We're just... We're not... E- this... We're looking for a pilot. Questioning... For the Mutar. The Mutar that you think isn't doing a good enough job, mate. He sort of, uh, uh, what, what sort of, sorry, uh, question. What sort yeah. of stance are you in right now? He's on his knees. I assume because you said that they were hanging him as now is like, is like wrist. If, if, he, if he, if he's on his knees, you yeah. feel a, uh, you feel a foot planted directly oh. between your shoulder blades and you're forced down to the ground. It is <laughs> yeah, none he's... of your concern. Ugh. <laughs> Fuck me. Like, <laughs> John. Honestly, on hearing like the the Mutar who you don't think is doing a good job, just slowly looks over at Broden, like you didn't like bleh, th- this update. <laughs> he, gives uh, you, he gives you a look back that can only be read as I was more distracted by the goat slaughter and tongueless woman at the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's but a he, little he, large. Oh gosh! Uh, a large a fucking dog, shepherd, a massive dog, sort of has postured itself between the two of you, and it is snarling in your face, uh, oh, Broden. Buddy. Just <sighs> right, all right. We'll go quietly. Nothing else out of my day. Fuck. Like, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is like an impulse on <laughs> on John's part. Oh, no. John likes dogs. Uh, he. <laughs> He oh, sees no. the dog. He's not even really seeing the snarling because he sees that as like an average thing that dogs do. Because mm-hmm. right. they always are. Uh, and he it. he sees the dog like in between him and he just kind of like from the moment of just what is this information of the politics of the town that is currently detaining us uh, to puppy. And he gives a little <laughs> whistle. <laughs> me give me a hmm i will say give me a communications role however you can modify it with your gut skill hey yo what? yo okay yeah, let's guts go. roll communication yes gut, guts roll communication uh for the is audience the guts is generally a smart skill but i will allow guts because communicating with communication an animal the <laughs> higher the higher the better baby let's go the for higher sure. the better all right let's brothers so should i roll four and save one or should i roll always three save, save one two? um do three and save two let's get funky with it let's mix things up good because i i will say if we get three successes that's it it's fine by me i think three successes is good what about you jordan uh are you, you ready for it, my man yeah, we, all we right. can only re-roll once though, so we have yeah, to kind of so consider that. Three save two. Yeah. Three save two. Let's go. Hup. Click off of the thing so I don't roll nothing. Very good. Very good. I learned. That's hey, two you could, fours. You hey, could, yeah, bump. You- you two could successes. just bump those up and just have two successes. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to go ahead and like get those two successes locked in. Okay. Uh, just just to clarify, man. what in particular are you trying to achieve? Specifically. Um, it is it is the most endearing whistle of just like something that this dog would hear from someone trying to give it like something. <laughs> He just it, it. You give a big smile, tilts his head with it. 
Mate, are you playing with a fucking dog? <laughs> he just broke and says in the background. <laughs> it's a good dog. No, no, don't, the, don't the, judge me over the dog. The, the owner, the owner of the dog, a good dog sort of uh, looks back sharply and the dog sort of like, <laughs> like postures ah. again, but its heart he, really he, isn't he, in like, it. Yeah, he 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 reciprocates. He's just, he gives like the slight like it's okay with a little like a big smile still on his face, but a little back at it. <laughs> and I think we have almost a... playing. It looks like play. <laughs> and the 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 guy who seems to the man who seems to be controlling the dog actually, who seems to be the owner of the dog actually, right? He he seems to like notice this. And you see, in particular, his expression kind of softens, just uh, just a if, little bit. If if John is noticing this, he mm -hmm. like he just kind of looks up at the owner with the same smile. Like he follows the leash up to him. It's a good dog, mate. The, you just see a curt nod, and but but the Nods dog back. still still takes its posturing, and you are still starting to be escorted towards god knows where sorry mm -hmm. uh you were saying Dupont. uh i think as we as we do start to uh get escorted archie is going to speak up now i uh i do not know how introductions go over here in turkey but uh, i think we might have gotten off on the wrong foot uh do you view us as your enemy make me a Either a communications or an invest or actually no, just a communications roll. Oh, mama. Okay. Uh, <laughs> roll to keep one in the chamber. Mm-hmm. Always. Yo. Oh, Ooh, sixes, baby. Can, so. I, can I use my last dice to just roll one more? Just uh. Um. Uh, or let me is that only double check really quick. Quickly. Yeah, the roll, the roll. yeah, hold on. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been, been a hot been a second. Bit. We haven't played NGH. Um, months. no, you have to you have to declare at the beginning the gotcha. amount of dice that you're rolling. So right, no. Cool. But Jeez, two so is that, pretty good. That, that was yeah. fucking great. I like that. <laughs> The, like the the sort of uh the sort of main the main person the sort of main head of the militia sort of like looks back at you and um just uh sorry uh j just to remind everyone including myself specifically your question specifically what was it uh like like I think we got off on the wrong foot here okay Do you consider us your enemy. Um, the, 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 the man sort of, uh, sort of, he, he has, like, a very large, I, I guess sort of what you would call a shotgun. He sort of, like, uh, takes it and he slings it over his shoulder and just, um, looks down at you and just <sighs> spits over towards the other side, opposite of you, and just, it is yet to be seen. Well, if it is yet to be seen, let us keep and just sit down and have a conversation. The so mutar will it, speak yeah. to you. Yeah, mate, he's taking us to that house I was telling you about last night. I'd rather sit down at his bar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he said that like almost, like like almost with like like in a manipulative sense, like almost as an invitation of just like, why the fuck are we doing this? Why don't we just fucking have a drink and talk? Yeah, not wanting to like escalate further than he already did and just kind of like it's just like oh what the fuck i mean what am i gonna do now like it, it broden is just fully like all right he's just gonna be quiet and, and and let him get shuffled along all the way back to the mutar's house but he kind of does mumble in his breath fucking lights it's on they could have grabbed us in the tan we hiked all the way out he already fucking and just you know right. if you had approached us wanting to have a conversation we would have just gone with you you did not have to uh ambush us the, the the man's nostrils flare a little bit, but as you continue on, as you are ushered forth, sort of hands bound in one way or another, you are taken towards the sort of main house, the main sort of seat of government of this town, and a, a man appears. He he comes out of the sort of uh the sort of main 
I, I guess you would say door, the main entrance. He looks over you all. He looks over your captors. He's sort of a uh, portly looking guy. Looks about to be middle aged. He's got lines of worry on his face, dark eyes, but he sort of nods in a sort of satisfaction and just we will he looks all of you individually in the eye we will speak and we will come to an agreement and before you have the chance to say anything you are taken to what you would presumably think was a, a sort of stable or some sort but has been converted to a sort of a jail holding cells and you are locked up individually separately what you have on yourselves and with that i think we are at our time so i believe we will leave our unit to their fates and next friday we will figure out exactly what happens to them